Hi, this is Bobby Lopez. And I'm Darren Bailey. And we're the PGA Pros at Tupelo Bay. <laughs> it's Wednesday night again, isn't it? We had to rehearse all week for that, you know that. We're a little out of sync, but we're a little, yeah, yeah, but we're getting there. Now, what did you want to show them with this swing here? Well, what's the topic today? Well, well, well first of all, it's, it's quickfixgolf.com for anybody who wants to join us on Wednesday nights. Just go to quickfixgolf.com, look for a free online class, and, and you'll get the link so that you can join us. All right, and tonight we're going to be talking about the first 18 inches of the takeaway because I've been dealing with a guy that's in Mexico, and uh, I know it'll help him too, and I feel other people having the same problem. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, this, this gentleman here, um, he sent us a video of his swing looking for a little help with his backswing. So let's take a look at what he does here. Oh, is that, that his backswing there? That's his backswing. What, what? That's not true. <laughs> What do you think about that start there? Put it, put it on full speed <laughs> so you can see it. Oh, no. Poor guy. Do it again. You got it. Unbelievable. Well, hopefully you're not doing that. Hopefully you're not starting the, the, <laughs> the backswing with, with the lifting of your arms. Hopefully you're not doing this. Hey, uh, Bill Melmar used to be a proponent of that. He said it's a lift. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to start. <laughs> oh, well. All right. So now, what are we doing? You're going to put the camera on me over yep. here, right? Yep. There we are. You got the camera? The camera is on. Look and see, am I in the center? You're in the center. With the wide angle lens? The wide angle lens. All right, now, <coughs> here's what I see all the time, even with the drill. I give them this drill right here, the connection drill, and then they send me a video going, they go, no, 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 no. Don't move the club. Don't move the club. Move you. See, if I turn this way, like this, and then I hinge this way, but if I continue to turn as I'm hinging, that's what gives the illusion that you're going around. You're not going around, you're going up. You're going here, boom. All this needs to move together. You start that momentum and it just goes right on back. So do you think it's everything's moving together or yes. would you think one part? No. Like, um, you know, uh, th there's a book out there, One Move to Power Golf and um, and I forget the gentleman's name. He talks about the left shoulder starting the motion, similar to what we talk about in the Dean Beeman program with the left shoulder initiating. Well, that, you feel like it's... You, you can do that if you want to start. If it, if it felt like you had the left shoulder, that's fine. What I don't want to feel is this. I don't want the arms to go off on their own and leave the body behind. But then you get here, and then they have no shoulder turn, which is what he had. No shoulder turn. A lot of times, Bobby, I see, though, people will come and, and they'll have that thought of just kind of all turn, and then the club gets so far behind them so quickly. Okay, good. This is what happened with this other guy we're working with, too. You get here, you sort of get like this, and then he goes, and he gets the club way behind me, behind him, here, gets separated, and then now he's stuck. Now he's only one thing he can do is this. He's going to go right over the top. Because if he just pulled his arm down, he's going to stick the club to the ground right there. It's here. See this? Here. 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 Feel this. Now from right here, I can just drop my arm and it'll land right on the ball. Right on the ball. So, you know, essentially what you're saying is that you're trying to keep the club between your arms as the yes. club moves back? Yes. Now, Horn, you, you get the strap. Get the strap. We're going to put this strap on. <laughs> Wait a minute. This was, the this was size for me, by the way. I don't know, I don't know if this is going to... Uh... Is it extra large? <laughs> you wanted it nice and tight, didn't you? Yes. How's that? All right, now what I'm going to tell you about... <laughs> <laughs> Melhorn, Bill Melhorn, before they ever had any of those belts or anything, this is 1970. Um... He had a big belt. I used to call it the Jackie Gleason belt. He had a bunch of holes punched in it so he, you know, it could fit it on anybody. And he would strap you up like this in a belt. And then you had to go. You had to. 
you know, because you, you couldn't go with your arms because you couldn't do it. The belt had you stuck there, and it was a leather belt. It didn't have any of this. It wasn't rubber like this where, it's, where it has a give to it. Here, 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 here. Would that be similar if you put a towel under your arms? Would you yes. have seen that drill before? Uh, Cesar right? Sanudo used to do that a lot. I don't know if you ever, remember Cesar Sanudo, you ever run into him? No. He used to play a lot with Trevino. The, the dog whisperer, Cesar? <laughs> no, 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 Cesar no, no, Milan. No, 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 I'm sorry. He's a real live player. He's a <laughs> But he was friends with, with Trevino. You look him up, Cesar Sanudo. He was a nice guy. Boom. I have this working not all right let's see if we can get some questions here see if we uh, let's open up the mics here and see if we got any any questions so far on what we've talked about you ready a microphone Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Okay. This is Chippy. Uh, when you start your turn, your whole body turns. Does the club go straight back or no. does it go on an angle going around as a circle? So it's a good question, Sippy. And here, I'm going to show you uh, a great picture here of Nicholas from an overhead view. Oh, there you go. All right. So here's, we're going to draw a target line for you. So watch as the club moves away. And Jack had a really, really good one piece takeaway. Watch how the club moves on an arc to the inside just slightly. Everything's kind of moving together as Bobby was talking about. But the club moves away on an arc and it doesn't move straight back and straight through along the target line. And I see that all the time. People trying to swing the club back and through on the target line. And that's going to get you out of sequence. But the club is going to move on a slight arc on the way back and then on a slight arc back into the ball and then a slight arc on the oops on the other side. But it doesn't move straight back. It moves on a slight arc to the inside. See, what Melhorn would tell you, not to criticize, you know, the best golfer on the planet, but you see where his club is here, his shoulder should be there too. But you're trying to keep the upper body together with the other. But you see, like right here, he's pretty darn close. This is neat. You should see a Jack is a little across the line at the top. Yes, I know. I was just, just ready to say that. As you know, he's a little across the line. See? Meaning that this, this line right here is not parallel with the flight plan. But I think that, that, that first, uh, the first move of the golf swing is so important because to me it sets up everything for the downswing. There's a, there's a lot of teachers out there would say the backswing doesn't matter. And, and I know for sure um, both Bobby and I think it's a, it's a very important uh, start to the golf swing. Now another thing I see all the time, you the camera back yep. up. This. Hold on. Camera's on. Got yep. it? Yep. What I see a lot of is this. Because some knucklehead told them to keep their head down, keep their eye on the ball. Right? So they get it this way. No. It's this way. If you look at Nicholas, his head is back towards his right foot, and his eyes are looking at the path. And his path, you see, this is the circle. If you didn't move your hands or arms at all, and just rotated your body, it's going to be in a circle, Sippy. Can't go straight. If this went this way, now it's, now it's disconnected. Okay. okay. So I go here, here, and the drill I use for that is here, 
Stick it in your belly button, turn to two o'clock, but don't use your arms to turn. Don't take this club. See, now this club is not at 90 degrees to my body. Here. All right, so uh, Mike is asking, Mike is asking, when does the wrist break occur? Uh-huh, okay, here you go, Mike. Watch, I go here. See, and, and my wrist break is this way. I'm keeping the club on the plane, but I'm turning at the same time. So, so it's a gradual break of the wrist? It's a grad in dreamland, <laughs> which you're probably not going to be in, when you've got 25% of your back swing, you've got 25% of your wrist hinge and 25% of your lift in the arms. But, you know, it doesn't really happen exactly that way. It doesn't. See, but here, I'm sort of... See? Now I've got the golf club pointed at the line of flight, and I'm right back to the original position. Any other questions? Yeah, that overhead view of uh, Jack. I was when you're watching it, it almost appears like his shoulders stopped swinging for a second, almost like the club was trying to catch up. Is that this? Is that his whip or something? Well. Jack, Jack would always say when his shoulders stopped moving, the golf club should stop moving as well. That was one of his Touchdown. principles. I didn't know he said that. Oh, yeah, he said I that know, all the time. I always say all the time, when, when your chest stops, the club stops. When your shoulders stop, the club stops. Yep. All right, what? Bring, bring, bring him on through and in the impact area. It almost looked like his shoulders stopped, like right there almost. Yep, see right there. His shoulders really slow down. It, they do, yes, and, and that's, you know, uh, Bobby says this this line all the time. You know, Nicholas would say that he wants to keep his buttons pointing at the golf ball as long as possible. So that's kind of what you're you're talking about there with the buttons of the shirt here, and the shoulder square to the line of flight, as opposed to where most people get, they get so open early in the downswing that their shoulders at impact are wide open. And you never have a chance to square up the club face when your shoulders get open like that. So, Jack, I thought I thought that was the whole purpose of going to two o'clock drill was to get your hands down in position first, so that wouldn't happen. That's exactly it. And um, you know that that's what Jack was trying to do. He was trying to get that golf club, the head of the golf club, there to to, to beat his body. So um, that two o'clock drill, absolutely, that's exactly what what he's trying to do there. But this is a great view. You don't see this very often. I'm surprised we don't see more of it nowadays with, with all the drone cameras out there. And um, because it's a it's a great place to to look mm. at, you know, how square your shoulders are at the hit mm. and how much shoulder you have. He damn near looks offside a little bit. His head's really not that far back from the ball. We don't know what he's hitting either. You might be hitting he's hit, he's in a five iron here. Oh, is it? Yep. But Jack tried to keep a steady head. He re that's, that was one of his big principles that we're going to go over in the Jack Nicholas rebuild program. Uh, probably his biggest fundamental was keeping a steady head and not having the, stead, the head moving all around the place. Um, but there's always going to be a little motion, and, and that's where Jack uses the word steady. It, it's not going to be still. It's going to be steady where he's trying to keep it from moving around. Earlier in his career, it moved around a little bit more than kind of a classic jack swing of, um, you know, when, when we really know him back, back in like 86, when he won those, the Masters there. But um, so here's kind of a, a classic jack. And if we just look at, look at his head, He tries to keep it steady. It moves a little bit, but he tries to keep it steady on the way back there. And you can see his his takeaway here. And there's not a lot of wrist set as the club goes back. He's, he's almost kind of delaying it. But that's the idea of what we're trying to get across tonight. It's that uh, that first move. How does that club move away? Mm -hmm. um, the feeling I think of, Frank, is that I say, I take it back with my chest, I bring it down with my arms. I take it back with my chest, I bring it down with my arms. 
You got to get the chest right at the, right at the beginning. What should the lower body be? How much movement should there be the lower body, i.e. the legs? Excuse me? How much movement should there be in the lower body, meaning the legs? So, yeah, so that, that depends on the person and depending how flexible you are. Um, your, your lead leg um, is going to change and flex quite a bit. It's, there's going to be some flexing of that lead leg. Let me bring... Um, Someone up here, how about a DJ? And if we watch uh, Dustin Johnson here, as the club moves back, you can see how his lead leg goes into flex here. Mm. And this leg uh, straightens up a little bit. And he's one of the most flexible guys out there. So if you're not as flexible as Dustin Johnson, you're gonna have more flex here and less flex here on the backswing. And that's just um, a natural thing that happens when the hips start to turn. And we did a video the other day on, um, on, on the hip turn, so you can check that out on YouTube, along with a bunch of our other videos that we recently posted. And that'll talk a little bit more about kind of how the knees work and, and the lower half. But they all should be just responsive to, um, to where the golf club is moving and, um, um, I don't know, what do you think? Well, you know, you look at the older players, Sam Snead and all those other oh, guys. Yeah. They all used to raise their heels and used to, you know, have a lot more movement in the lower body. And these younger players, they're in better condition and they're skinnier. Yeah. But however, you know, I, I, I like, especially with senior golfers, I tell them, let your, let your heels come up because it's really doing a big number on your lower back. Wait, see, see, look how much he moves up. Look at it. His knee is straightening up, like you said. Yep. Of course, this is Jack when he was older. Even when he was younger, he still had quite a bit. It allowed him to make the full backswing, a nice full turn. Well, he had such big legs, too, so that had a lot to, you know, to try and move all that. Yeah, he had strong legs. You know, but uh, for senior golfers, I say always, let, let the heels come up some. Let just, let you, you can't get enough of a turn otherwise, and it won't hurt you. Yes, Jack's head comes up a little bit on the back, so he lifted out of the spine angle, but uh, so does Kenny Perry a little bit. Uh, what causes that? Um, it could be a, a variety of things, but you, you want to keep that head steady. As Jack would say, it's one of the most important fundamentals, if not the most important to him, keeping that head steady for moving up and down and, and moving side to side. But let me, Can I add something to that? Watch this. Where's where's Jack's front view we just had here? Not that one. There, that one. Now watch this. Do you see where his head is pointed? Do you see where his head is in the first place? It's not over the top of the ball. So when Jack talks about keeping the head steady, he lifts up a little bit, and then maybe because he's getting older. But watch where his head's gonna go. We'll get this stupid thing out of the way here. Look at his head back up. His head backed up from this line over here all the way to there. Because some way or another, you gotta get your head here because you gotta get the left shoulder even with the ball. So if you set the head there in the first place, which is what he does, he tilts his head and he gets it behind the ball to start off with. Or some players, if they have the head a little closer to the ball, they have to move a lot on the backswing. He doesn't move a lot on the backswing, but he moves on the downswing. So you can keep your head real, real steady as long as you've got it behind the ball. But if you have your head over the top of the golf ball and you're trying to keep it steady, unless you're Gumby, you're not going to make any kind of backswing, guaranteed. Especially with the driver. Yep. You know, I, I, I've, you know, with an iron, we're, we're, we're We've got a different argument, but with the driver, there is no argument with this. That head has to be back. That's what all good players are doing. There's no argument there. You know, it's the same way if you're throwing from center field to home plate, you're going to tilt back a bunch. But if you're throwing from second to first, you're not. So like you say, a wedge, you're going to have very little movement in the head. Yep. But you're not making much of a movement in your chest and your shoulders and your body with the wedge as you're with the driver. So just, just... 
Because I think some people, they think they hear it by keeping their head steady, and they don't realize they've got it over the top of the ball in the first place, and that's not a good place to keep it steady. Get it behind the ball, and then keep it steady. That's a good idea. Any other questions? This is Roger. I think we lost them all. No. No, we're there. Oh, there they are. Yeah, there's the thing. See, we can see from Mara, we have to see the little. Uh... Any other questions? Hey, Bobby, could you could you uh, demonstrate the uh, proper in slight inside arc taking the club back versus the uh, uh, improper taking the club back too far inside? Okay. You can use that, that green line down there. Here's the green line. Good idea. Can you see that green line? Yep. We're good. Okay. Now watch. If I don't move my arms and I do this, I'm going to be right on the arc. Because the body is the camshaft of the engine. So if the body does this and it turns this way towards 2 o'clock, we're talking about the 2 o'clock drill. Right? If I don't move my arms at all, that club's going to be right on plane. The only thing that's going to take it off plane is that my arms go here, or my arms go here, and my body didn't go with it. Yeah. See? So I turn, yeah. I'm hinging, and I'm lifting. I'm right back to the ball. See? I'm going right here. Arc's coming in, but it's going up. And now the club's pointed right at the line of flight. What I gotta do is put it back. That's simple. Can you do that one more time? See, when I start the club back, here's what I do. See, I do this little forward press with my hips. Now this club is still right in front of my belly button. Yeah. Right? And as I hinge and lift, my belly button's turning at the same rate of speed. And when my chest stops, the club stops. When I get to here, I don't keep going like this. That's where you get a lot of people to get, you know, the bent left arm or whatever. They're trying to go further than what their than what their flexibility will allow. So it's here. It's all in one piece. Bobby, I noticed with a lot of players from your generation that they had, <laughs> they had more flare flair with their feet than the typical um, the, tip, the players of, of, uh, of today. Uh, what do you think about the foot flare and your ability to make this turn in the backswing? Well, one thing, I like I like the feet moving. That's what I liked about Justin's feet. When I saw him for the first time, I said, this kid's going to be good. Now he screwed the whole thing all up. Because he used to do this, and he moved a lot, and then he'd go. And when he bent his knees, you knew he was going back. And that's one thing you see about Trevino. <laughs> He did it the same way every time. And I think having the toes open allows you to get a much better turn and go heel to heel than having a foot pointed in. It's going to restrict your backswing, especially with a driver. I'd have, I have both toes open with a driver because I'm trying to get as much turn as I can get. Does that answer your question? Yes. Is that Frazier? Yes. Hey, Pastor, what are you doing, buddy? Hey, great. We had a night off. We did our music last Sunday. So really? I'm free tonight. Yep. All right, now you're going to lead us in the carol now. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We won't go until we get some. <laughs> and, and, and a cold bug jug of beer. <laughs> Anybody else got a question? Before we start singing again, you'll be sorry. <laughs> This is a tough crowd. It's you a tough are, crowd. Anyone? Where's, anyone? Where's, where's, where's the book? Is there done that joke we had today? <laughs> Where is the book? I, I, I remember what the joke was already. <laughs> yeah. This guy's playing, the guy's in Scotland on vacation, see, and he's playing with the Scotsman, the American guy. And the Scotsman said, hey, this is a little cold up here for you. And he says, oh, yeah, well, I'm from up north. It doesn't bother me that much. He said, is that? He says, no. He said, well, what do you guys do here in Scotland? He says, oh, well, you know, we, we play all year round. He said, well, we can't play all year round because we've got snow everywhere. He said, what do you do if you get snow here? He said, do you paint your balls black? He said, no, we just wear an extra sweater. <laughs> They're roaring their laughing. Yeah. <laughs> all 
All right. Uh, okay, I got another question. Go ahead. Now, <laughs> with the driver, you're teeing up the ball as high as you can. Yes. Now, on a part three, you're going to tee off with a iron. How high do you tee the ball up? You need to be tee up higher. What do you say, like a quarter inch? Yeah, you're just, just elevating it off the ground. The tee is a perfect lie, and that's all you're doing. You're just elevating it just slightly above the ground. Yeah, you don't want to elevate the, the tee on the iron shot too and, much. And the, the ground, in, in my term of definition, includes um, or doesn't include the grass. So that the ground is the actual ground itself, not where the, the highest point of grass is. So you're just elevating it slightly off the ground. So. Yeah, if you put it too high and you hit the upper part of the iron, yep. you lose you lose, lose a lot a of distance. distance. Yes, because most of the meat is down near the bottom edge of the golf yep. club. Yeah, you that's that's a whole thin to win philosophy. You'd rather hit it a little thin in this situation than high in the face because it's never going to get there. Yeah, unless you have those old Australian blades that used to have weight up on the top as well as the bottom. You sure, they were Australian. Well, we used to call them the Australian blades. A lot of Australian players used to have them. That was one thing about the Aussies on the European tour. They could drink more beer than all of us combined. All of us combined and hit it further than everybody. They were strong as a moose. Any other questions? If not, we'll go. No, that's it. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, wrap this one up. And um, we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And then we'll be back after that. Yep. We'll see you in uh, a couple weeks. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you, see you next year. <laughs> Uh, Darren, okay. guest coming up. Yes, this is true. I've got a bunch of uh, people lined up going forward. Some really, really um, uh, smart people. You know, people that um, we're going to talk about some. Some uh, one of the gentlemen uh, worked on Jack Nicklaus's clubs for a while, specifically the '86 Masters, that putter that he used, and a uh, great statistician. And then um, we, we got them all lined up. You'll have somebody smart, not me. <laughs> Tough crap. Thank Tough you. Crap. Good night, everybody. Thank you. All right, Bobby. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby and Darren. Good night, everyone. Merry Christmas.